Good evening, Facebook. I'm uh, quite often asked, what is the uh, things that I've learned over the last, what is it now, 27 years in the personal development space, specializing in NLP, hypnosis, timeline therapy, mental emotional release, and HUNA. What is it that I've uh, experienced or learned over those 27 years that have had the biggest impact on my life and my business? And uh, there are two things that uh, really stick out in my mind. One would be the format system, uh, which I've covered in previous uh, Facebook Lives as a means of structuring presentations, as a means of structuring sales presentations, sales calls, also using format system for NLP modeling, and also as a means of inputting information from books and trainings into your mind pre-formatted. The second one, would be this perception is projection and you know i've been teaching perception is projection for probably the last 24 years and it really has been kind of like uh, in my perception a lot uh, this week um, a coaching call with uh, my fixers in fix my mind on monday morning really brought up the notion of perception is projection from a generating business point of view then last night, uh, I had the opportunity, the privilege of actually being there when David Icke was launching his new book, Everything You've Ever Wanted to Know. And a lot of what he was talking about was perception again. So I thought, okay, I'm always thinking, you know, what am I going to, what am I going to do for Thursday night's Facebook Live? And uh, I take what's relevant, what's going on for me at any particular point in time. And this has been in my face. So we've never done a Facebook Live on Perceptions Projection. So here we go. Here's the major concept. All you have is your perception of reality. That's it. What you're experiencing right now is your perception of Facebook, your perception of Facebook Live, your perception of me, and your perception of what I'm talking about. And this uh, concept originally came from Carl Jung, taken as probably one of the grandfathers of modern day psychology, along with Freud. And Carl Jung said perception is projection. He said, all you've got is your perception of other people, of situations, of circumstances. And that perception is a projection from inside of you. It's like you project out from inside of you. It's reflected back from people, situations, circumstances, and you then have that perception. Now, the majority of people think that this perception is real and that it's separate from them. There's me and there's other people. There's me and there's these situations and circumstances in life. And what Carl Jung was saying was in actual fact, it's all you. It's just that you don't realize it. A couple of other things that he, that he said from this, and by the way, perception is projection. That was Jung's um, <clears throat> branding, if you like, of this particular concept, this particular idea. He wasn't the originator of it. Uh, we could track it down to uh, Hermetic philosophy. Uh, Hermes Trismegistus, the thrice great, said, has above, so below. In some of the ancient Taoist um, <clears throat> teachings. We've got so in the microcosm as in the macrocosm, which is basically saying what is inside is the same as outside and what's outside is the same as inside. Meaning you can change the outside by changing the inside. You can change the inside by changing the outside, which is what we've got in some of the traditions like feng shui, for instance. If we were to look into other worlds of magic and the occult, if we, uh, if we dare go there, then <clears throat> um, Alistair Crowley said his definition of magic, which obviously would have a K after it, magic was <clears throat> being able to change external situations, circumstances, and people by creating willful change inside of yourself. As soon as I saw that definition of magic, immediately I thought of NLP. We could also look at Gandhi's um, 
phrase or quote or something he's very, very famous for, which was, be the change you want to see in the world. All saying the same thing, perception is projection. But if you look at it from a Jungian perspective, then <clears throat> Carl Jung said that all we've got is a perception. This is a projection from inside of us. He said some very interesting things about relationships, I think, which was uh, that we marry our unconscious mind, our significant other, husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, is our projection. What we perceive of them is our projection from inside of us. And you know, one of the things that he actually said with that was that this significant other in our life, what we actually project onto them is our shadow. A lot of people misinterpret that. They go shadow, evil, dark, dirty, nasty. And that's not actually what Carl Jung meant about your shadow. What he was actually meaning was you can't see your own shadow. That's what he was talking about. So what you project onto significant others in our life is the you that you're not consciously aware of. So, you know, this is why he said relationships were challenging. He said the biggest mistake that a lot of people make is that they believe the purpose of a relationship is to get to know the other person. He said that since this is patently impossible in the first place because of the way that neurologically we're built, the purpose of a relationship is to get to know ourselves, to get to know the us that we're not consciously aware of. So our husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend is a mirror that reflects back our shadow, who we are that we're not consciously aware of. So yes, you know, it sounds like a fairly uh, hefty weight to carry in relationships. Uh, and in actual fact, the reality is it is all you. And, you know, I always quite jokingly say, it's when I realized that everything was my fault, then my life became a lot easier. Uh, when people said, David, this is you, this is your fault. I just went like, yeah, I know, <laughs> I'm dealing with it. So that is, is where the major concept comes from. Uh, and it has obviously an impact in our relationships. It has an impact in our life in general, which we'll talk about. It has an impact in business. Um, particularly in sales. So, and also for presenters, speakers, and trainers out there, it has a big impact on presenting and speaking. So I want to look at how we can work with this, uh, how it works from a structural point of view, a neurological point of view, but also how, you see, the, here's, the, here's the major concept with this. Major concept is that if we are perceiving something that we don't like, then all we need to do is to change our projection. When we've successfully done that, then our perception of the person, the people, the situation, the circumstances, etc., will change. Um, <clears throat> and the big mistake a lot of people make is they think this is a linear relationship, and it's not a re linear relationship. So quite often when people see this, they go, well, I just can't see how I'm projecting that onto this person. I can't see how I'm projecting this onto this situation and circumstance. So, you know, what is it that I need to see, need to change? So I want to talk about that um, this evening because this has been very forefront in my, uh, in my mind um, over this week, working with some of my clients, some of my customers uh, and friends, and also my, my own life in general. So let's, um, let's have a look at the the kind of like the neurological NLP side of perceptionist projection. So we have now taken from modern uh, neuroscience, receiving around about, depending on who, whose uh, work you look at, 11 million bits per second of information streaming in through our nervous system. Some people say 11, some people say 12, but it's a lot of information. I mean, my uh, iPhone that I'm actually doing this Facebook Live on uh, <clears throat> has 64 gigabytes of memory <laughs> from the early days of IT that I'm from. You know, our first computer I programmed was in 1981. It was a Cyber 205 and you programmed it in uh, punch cards. Then, you know, this amount of data is just huge. 64 gigabytes was unknown of. It would be the size of a, 
a warehouse, but now it's in my phone. If we put this amount of information onto my phone, then my phone would be full before the end of the day. That's what we've got to look at as far as the amount of information that we've been receiving every single second of 24 hours a day since we've been alive. And I can tell you now, our nervous system is nowhere near full. We're not about to need to uh, reboot you or anything like that anytime soon. But obviously it's a huge amount of information. This comes into our nervous system and it's then filtered really to make, for a big, big part, to make it manageable. We've talked about this in, in earlier Facebook Lives. And this filtering is done by our unconscious mind. It's done outside of pro, uh, out of consciousness. And it's filtered through our emotions, both positive and negative emotions. It's filtered through our beliefs, it's filtered through our values, and it's filtered through our meta programs. Also things that we've looked at a lot uh, in previous Facebook Lives. And after this information has been filtered, I mean, you know, just think about it. Actually, I could add another one there as well, uh, which I've only just thought of. And this is something I'm going to be talking about a lot about in the coming days on my master practitioner training. Language. We think of language as just being a means of communication, but in actual fact, language is a filter. You know, and when I've got a group of people with me, and I say, who here is bilingual or multilingual? And the number of people will put their hands up. And I say, is the world a different place depending on the language you're thinking in? Every single one of them says yes. Uh, I do a demonstration. I take somebody in the group who's experiencing some physiological pain. And I ask them to give me a word, or three words actually, to describe the physical sensation of the page, pain. Then I say, give me three more. Give me three more, not using the previous ones you've used, until they run out of words. When they've run out of words, the pain will go down from like a seven or an eight to a zero. Uh, even to the point where I did that demonstration with one student um, and she'd run out of English words, but she was Greek. And I said, are there any Greek words to describe this pain? And there were, and she gave me the Greek words. And when she ran out of Greek words, it went down from a seven or an eight to a three to a zero. So our language even projects into our experience. Shift our language, shift our perceptions. That's definitely something that we're going to be looking at. It's what Alfred Korzybski was talking about in his book, Science and Sanity. So we filter all of this information and we then create what we call from an NLP point of view, our internal representation. The thing, and we talk about this in detail in our previous Facebook Live, what you're experiencing right now is not this. What you're experiencing is your internal representation of this Facebook Live. Some of my Facebook Lives have had two, 3,000 um, views. What I know from that is there are 3,000 different versions of that video. And none of them bear any resemblance to the Facebook Live I believed I was giving at the time. Because each one of you who've watched those videos will have individually filtered those through your emotional state at the time, your beliefs, your values, your meta programs, and your language before creating your internal representation. And uh, Mihai Chiksen Mihai in his book Flow uh, estimated that the brain has the ability to process 126 bits per second consciously. Miller, in his book, The Magical Number Seven, said that consciously we can process, we can pay attention to seven plus or minus two things, somewhere between five and nine things. But look at what's coming in. So the majority of people think that this is real, but in actual fact, it's not. What we're experiencing is our internal representation. That is the perception. And what we have in here is what we project out on the world. Now, how does that come about in our experience? Have you ever had a situation where you had a completely different idea about a person than somebody else? Maybe even diametrically opposed. You perceived them one way, somebody else perceived them a completely different way. It's the same person. 
What is different is what we project onto that person. Uh, I remember, I think it was in 2008, 2009, um, I know it was just after the, uh, the last market crash. And uh, I decided that I wanted to go and learn how to trade uh, the markets and Forex uh, with my friend Greg Secker. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of doom and gloom around at the time. People thought I was absolutely crazy for wanting to get into trading uh, when the markets were crashing terribly. And, you know, I was on the tube going to uh, Greg's uh, training center in, uh, in Fulham. And... Um, you know, everybody's reading the papers. It's a double dip. It's not a, it's not a recession. It's a depression and whatever. Big, big doom and gloom. I get to the uh, training center where Greg's got a trading floor, and there are people running around like crazy, excited like mad. And I'd already done some training uh, for Greg's sales guys. I've done some sales training, some presentation training uh, for his for his trainers. Um, and so I knew someone, I said, whoa, what's, what's, go, what's going on? I said, wow, didn't you see what happened in the markets yesterday, David? And I went, of course I did, yeah. I said, wasn't it, wasn't it great? And I go, uh, that's all most people are saying. And they went, no, 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 you don't understand. You make mar money from a market that's moving. The market dropped yesterday, and it, it, it dropped, the amount it dropped yesterday was the amount that it would have taken 10 years to rise, because markets rise significantly slower than they drop. And you make money from the change. He said, we, we had the opportunity of making as much money yesterday as we did, would, that would have previously taken us 10 years to make on a rising market. We're hoping the same thing's gonna happen today. We're gonna go off and make some trades. You know, and I thought about that. I thought, the markets are the markets. You know, it's just information. It's just pure data. You know, the exchange rate between, you know, the cable exchange rate between the pound and the dollar, pound and the euro, etc., is just the way it is. But what was different was people's perception of that. It was the perception of what was happening to the FTSE, FTSE share index. You know, <clears throat> and the, the share index was just a number. But some people were excited about what was happening with that. Some people were depressed about what was happening with that. What was different? Their projection. I remember my friend uh, Tad James uh, telling a, a story about um, he used to share an office with a guy and uh, this guy had his own business, a very successful businessman, and he sold solid gold golf putters. I mean, what a concept, what an idea for a business. And he did very, very well. He sold solid gold golf putters for executives to put on their desk. And uh, Tad said that one day he came in and this guy had his head down on the, on the desk, not saying a word. He was normally hitting the phones like crazy and he's just got his head on the desk. And he was like that for two, three hours. And suddenly he took his head off the desk and started making calls, selling golf putters. But at the end of the day, Tad said, look, you know, I'm curious. How come you uh, had your head down, didn't make any calls for two or three hours this morning? And he said, you know, well, when I woke up this morning, I really couldn't for the life of me think why someone would ever want to buy a solid gold golf putter. So he said, I knew there was no point me phoning up. There's no point me calling anybody because all that's gonna come back from me is why on earth would I want to buy a solid gold golf putter? So, you know, in sales, then the objections that we get back from other people are our projection. If we wake up one morning and we've got poverty consciousness, guess what? What you're selling is going to be too expensive. People won't have the money. If we wake up in the morning and we've got time consciousness, as in we're really, really busy and there's not enough time going on, we can't speak to people, stop bothering me, then what's going to happen when we actually contact our prospective customers? They're not going to have time. They're going to be too busy. Or if we, for instance, wake up one morning, we don't believe in what we're doing. We don't believe in what we're offering to our potential customers. Then guess what? They're not going to believe it either. Now, an interesting thing that I always think is, you know, um, if you don't feel a million dollars, if you don't 
feel a million pounds or whatever uh, the equivalent would be in your currency, then don't bother asking anybody for it because you're not going to get it. Perception is projection. And so, you know, as well with presenters, speakers and trainers, and I've got a lot of, a lot of people out there uh, who do this for a living or want to start getting into this. I've been doing it now for nearly 27 years. Your audience, you have your perception of your audience. You have your perception of your students and that's your projection. You know, if you're looking out at the world and you're not perceiving what you want, then change what's going on inside. You know, I was telling our fixers in Fix My Mind uh, on Monday, an experience I had, I was uh, training for Microsoft, their uh, value-added resellers um, business development team. It's the closest at the time that uh, Microsoft had to a sales team. And uh, I was going to be teaching them NLP for three days, I think it was, uh, up in the Microsoft University in Reading. And uh, I arrived and I was teaching them NLP. And uh, to say it didn't go well would be an understatement. Um, there were 13 people on the training, if I remember rightly. I never had rapport with more than one of them at any particular point in time. I built rapport with this guy over here, then moved to build rapport with this guy, got rapport with this guy, but lost rapport with this guy. Now, that's going to be hard work, but it also means these 13 people were not in rapport with each other. Trainers out there, you know what that's going to be like. And, you know, I'm good at building rapport with people. I'm good at building rapport with, uh, with groups. I had used everything that I had in my master trainer toolbox. None of it was working. And everything that I taught them on that day, they shot down in flames immediately. They either said, that's rubbish, or it won't work in Microsoft. Microsoft is totally unique. I thought the guy who'd hired me actually might say, don't come back tomorrow. Uh, to a certain extent, I was hoping he was going to say, don't come back tomorrow. He, di he didn't. So I get home, and I've got two more days of this. And I thought, you know, what can I do? I, I, there's no technique that I can use. I've used absolutely everything and it's not working. What can I do to change things? And then this popped into my mind. Perception is projection. Now, here's the next twist in the puzzle that we need to get to be able to make this work. Is that perception is projection is non-linear. A lot of people think that you get back in your perception what you're projecting onto the same person. So if I'm projecting something onto you, it would come back in my perception of you. But perception's projection is a little bit more tricky than that. It doesn't work that way. So for instance, in a linear world, if I had a tennis ball and I threw a tennis ball at that wall there, it would come back from that wall. From a perception's projection point of view, it doesn't work that way. If I threw a tennis ball out at that wall over there, it might come from that wall over there. So what you've got to do is you've got to go, okay, so what's my perception of the situation, circumstance of this person? And my perception of this particular uh, audience that I got was that they were totally out of rapport with each other. So I asked myself the question, or I asked more correctly my unconscious mind the question, where am I out of rapport with myself? And my unconscious mind gave me an answer. So I used my NLP techniques, some of my HUNA techniques, to actually heal up that lack of rapport inside of me. Then I go, what else is my perception of this particular audience? And what I got was that, you know, they immediately shot down anything that I said without giving you a fair hearing. So I thought, tennis ball metaphor, Throw a tennis ball out here, comes back from there. So what I go is, okay, so whereabouts in my life, not just in business, whereabouts in my life do I treat someone that way? Who do I treat in that way? Where they give me, come to me with an idea and I don't even think of it, I don't even consider it, I don't do anything. It's just like, no, it won't work. And a person popped into my mind. And immediately what I did was I went, okay, from now on, when that person comes to me with an idea, 
I will at least give it a fair hearing. I will think about it. I'll consider it very, very carefully. I'm not going to guarantee I'm going to say yes. But you see, before I just said no automatically without even thinking about it. I just went, right, from now on, I'm going to change the way that I behave with that person. Now, we talked about emotions. <laughs> I also used uh, timeline therapy or mental emotional release techniques to let go of the fear of going back the next day. And also I harbreathed all the way from Ealing to Reading uh, to make sure that I was really good and energized and calm, balanced and centered when I arrived. I walked in, I see these 13 people. They're all in rapport with each other already. I walk in, I speak to them. I've got rapport with every single one of them straight away. Those of you who know NLP will understand my kind of like uh, surprise or incredulity, I guess would be the word. Um, on day one, they thought the idea that 55% of the meaning of communication being in our physiology was the most ridiculous thing that anybody had ever said. On day two, they thought the idea of being able to elicit someone's decision-making strategy from the way that person moved their eyes was the most obvious thing that anybody had ever said. They couldn't believe that they hadn't thought of it themselves. Now, for me, 55% of, of communication being in your physiology and being able to elicit someone's in, internal decision-making strategy from their eye patterns uh, is uh, on totally different levels, you know? And I, you know, I left after having a great day and I thought, <clears throat> wow, they'd really changed. But then I thought, did they really change? Who really changed? What really changed? The only thing really I could say that had changed is my perception of them had changed. And the only thing that had happened between day one and day two was I'd worked on changing my projections. So the first thing we've got to get is that perception's projection is non-linear. It doesn't come back from, it's like if we had a projector here, we're projecting on this screen, we know where the projector is. But what you've got in this non-linear world of perception is projection is you've got something on screen A that's coming from a projector that's pointing somewhere else. That's the first little tricky thing that we've got to deal with with perception's projection. The other thing we've got to, we've got to work with as well is that the perception doesn't come back necessarily at the same logical level as the projection that we're sending out. I remember doing a practitioner training uh, many, many years ago, and one of my students, John, um, <clears throat> we, I'm talking about perception is projection, and he puts his hand up and he said, David, I think this is the absolute boat, big, biggest rubbish I've ever heard of in my life. Didn't actually say that, but uh, my mum might be watching, so I'm being careful. Hi, mum, if you are. Um, and uh, I said, so how do you do that, John? And uh, he said, well, I've got a potential customer that I'm wanting to sell a particular uh, product to, particular service to. And this customer is out in the US and every single time I talk to him, he comes back with the same response, John, if it's not American, it's crap. Now John says, you know, per personally, how can that be my projection? He says, because I, I think quite the opposite of that. I think that if it is American, it's crap. Of course, that is an example of projection in and of itself. Everybody else in the room is going like, oh no, and he's digging a nice big ditch for himself. So, but it doesn't come back from the same logical level. This is how I enabled him to get it. I said to him, so what is, if it's not American, it's crap, an example of? And he said, an objection. I said, great. And what's an objection an example of? He goes, a judgment and a bad one. I said, right, okay. So whereabouts in your life do you judge people inappropriately? And I could tell he was in transitory emotional search. His eyes were rolling around all over the place. So I could tell he was really thinking about this. And he goes, well, you know, David, to be honest with you, I'm probably one of the most judgmental people you'll ever meet. I said, well, there you go. And he still hadn't got it, but I really put him into a spin. He'd gone into guidance internally. He was there for the rest of the day. 
And um, <clears throat> when we started the next morning, uh, he, he put his hand up and said, David, do you mind if I say something before we start? And I said, yeah, sure. What, you know, what is it, John? He says, yesterday I said that I thought perception is projection is rubbish. Oh, and I remember. I said the wording was a little bit stronger than that. And he goes, it's not. It's absolutely brilliant. It's the best thing I've ever come across. And I went, okay, so how's that? He said, well, you know, you'd ask me what, what's an objection, what's a, if it's not American, it's crap, an, an example of an objection, the judgment. I'd realized then that I, do, I judged people. So he said, last night I just decided I was going to stop that. I was just going to stop judging people. And he said, and I phoned this prospective customer up. Uh, and in that call, not once did he mention, if it's not American, it's crap. In fact, on Saturday, after the practitioner training, I'm getting on a flight over to Atlanta, where his company is, to sign the deal. He said, I love this perceptionist projection thing. So that's a couple of things we've got to realize with this, is that perceptionist projection is not linear. It doesn't come back one-to-one. -one. And also, it doesn't come back at the same logical level. We, need to, we might need to chunk up, find out what it's an example of, look at what are other examples of that to actually work out where we are project, where we're projecting and what we're projecting. Then we can change it. Now, of course, then we've got a lot of different tools and techniques in our toolbox from NLP, from timeline therapy, from uh, mental emotional release, from HUNA to be able to change these. I think probably one of the most exquisite tools and techniques for changing our projections onto other people is the process of Ho'oponopono, which is available in the HUNA section in the I'm David Shepherd app at uh, davidshepherd.com. I use that on a very, very regular basis to be able to change my projections on other people. Also for my HUNA students uh, out there, the Kiave process that we teach at level one of HUNA is absolutely brilliant for changing our projections on other people. From an NLP point of view, then visuals cross parts integration is a fantastic technique from timeline therapy, mental emotional release, releasing the negative emotions. You know, I've met a lot of people that, for instance, have had a lot of unresolved fear and their perception is that the world is a scary place and that there are situations, circumstances and people that are scary and it's your fear that keeps you safe. And at first there might be a little bit of resistance to actually letting go of that fear because of that. But when they then realize that, you know, from a perceptionist projection point of view, they're projecting the fear out there then, and they let the fear go with timeline therapy or mental emotional release, then what happens is their perception of the world changes. The world is now a safe place. So that's why I would say that probably this is one of, if not the most uh, powerful and useful thing that I've learned. And you know, just to, just to leave you on the search, check the time, yeah, I've run over. <laughs> just to check the time, just to check, uh, I'll give you a final thing. And this was something that David Icke said last night, actually, and I, and I quite liked it uh, because you know, there's a big projection screen up in the venue that we were. And he goes, you know, we project something onto this screen like a movie or a picture and we don't like it. You wouldn't dream of blaming the screen because it's not the screen. The screen is just the reflector of what's being projected. But he said in life, we do. We go around, we look at a situation, a circumstance or a person and we blame that situation, circumstance or person for our perception of it. But it's just a screen. They are just a screen. The situation and circumstances are just a screen. Take a look inside, use what you know to change that projection and your perception will change. Thanks for joining me. I uh, really uh, enjoyed this session actually. I'm really pleased I decided to uh, do one on perceptions projection. Hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you on Facebook Live next week. Take care.